In this final video on Edexcel Additional Chemistry Topic 2, we are going to be looking at ion tests. So how do we test for both positive and negative ions in ionic compounds? To do this, I'm going to divide up my page into two. On the left-hand side, we are going to have test, tests for positive ions. So generally metal ions, but any positive ion or cation. On the right, we are going to have tests for um, negative ions or anions. So, firstly, let's start with positive. Now, the test for positive ions is actually relatively straightforward. All we need to do is to get ourselves a Bunsen burner. Okay, and a wire loop. Which might look something like that. Okay, and we are going to have our sample of our compound that we are going to test. Now, what you need to do first is to make sure your loop is completely clean. So before you start um, dipping your loop in your compound and putting it in the flame, you need to make sure that there is no other chemicals on your loop. So your first step is to um, dip loop in concentrated acid. Okay, and then you're just going to hold it in uh, your blue um, or pale flame. Um, see if it is um, clean, if it doesn't burn with, it in, with any other colour. And if it does still have a colour to it, you need to dip back in your acid and repeat that until the um, there is no colour in the flame. Once that is the case, you would simply need to dip your loop in your sample. And that will um, get some of the compound on your loop. Hold it in your flame and look for the colour it burns with. Look for flame colour. Okay, and there are four that you need to know, so not too many to remember. If your flame burns with a lovely yellow colour, okay, you must say yellow. This is going to be the sodium ion. Okay, so if it burns with a yellow colour, it is going to be sodium. If it burns with a lilac flame, okay, I have only got purple, but you must say lilac, okay, kind of a pale purple or pink, that is potassium. If the flame has a green or greeny blue colour. That's the green. That's the blue. This is going to be copper. And if it burns with a red colour, this is going to be calcium. So remember these four. They are the colours you are looking for. Okay, I always remember yellow street lamps have got sodium in them. Okay, so sodium burns with a yellow flame. Um, I remember purple for potassium. You must say lilac though. Okay, so try and say lilac if you can. Um, copper, the Statue of Liberty is the colour it is because it was coated with copper, um, which then corroded. Um, it's a bluey green colour, and calcium is red or brick red. Okay. They are our positive ions, or our cations, and negative ions are a little bit harder to remember. And there are three that we need to know. The first one we need to know is our carbonate ion, or CO3 T minus. So something like calcium carbonate, we could test the calcium by doing our flame test, dipping a loop um, into the sample, holding it in flame, which should go red. Okay, that will tell us it's um, calcium. To, to determine it's carbonate, we um, do another this um, quite straightforward test. Okay, so what you need to do is um, three steps. Your first step is simply to add dilute acid. Okay, it doesn't actually matter which acid you add. You can name one if you want, or you can just say add dilute acid. Okay, you should, if it is carbonate, see bubbles. 
um, and we are going to pass those bubbles through lime water. And if you remember back to our core chemistry, if it is carbon dioxide that is given off, we would expect those that lime water to go cloudy or milky. Okay, so just um, just to show you what that might it might look like, you would have your um, you'd have your carbonate sample, if it's a liquid or a solid, doesn't matter in a test tube. You would have a delivery tube going into lime water. Okay, the gas should bubble through and it will turn your lime water cloudy. So that is your test for the carbonate ion. The second test we need to know about is for the sulfate ion or SO4 2 minus. Okay, this one is um, slightly well, quite a lot harder to remember. Our first step, again, you, you're going to use um, a little bit of acid. This time, you must say hydrochloric acid. Okay, so we are going to add dilute HCl or hydrochloric acid. Yeah, you shouldn't see any bubbles at this stage. Your next step is to add barium chloride solution. Okay, if you remember back to the last video, we said that the compound we're going to make, barium sulfate, is insoluble. Okay, so the chemical we make should be a precipitate. Okay, so we should see a white precipitate forming. And if that happens, the compound we started with must have been a sulfate. The third and final negative ion test we need to know is for the chloride or Cl minus ion. Okay. Um, so with this, we again need to know the acid we add. This time it is nitric acid. Okay, so add nitric acid this time. After that, we are going to add silver nitrate solution. Okay, so we're going to add silver nitrate solution. Okay, again, um, from our solubility rules, we said that silver chloride the chemical uh, ionic compound we're going to make is insoluble. So again, we should see a white precipitate forming. Okay, I'm going to show on precipitate to PPT. If that is the case, then you have um, a, or you started off with a chloride salt for a chloride compound. Okay, so there is, again, quite a lot to learn here. Make sure you do, because we can guarantee these are going to come up. Your positive ion test, we just need to learn um, the method we will use and the four colours. So remember, yellow for sodium, lilac for potassium, green, blue for copper, red for calcium. Our negative ion tests are harder to remember. Again, write this out, cover it up, and make sure you have learned these.